This is the In the Money podcast for KeelanSelect.com for the Friday, April 11th card, Makers 46 Mile Day at Keelan. Tom Leach, along with Keelan's director of simulcasting, Jim Goodman, and it is a 10-race card to take a look at. Uh, well, not the whole card, but we take a look at the feature race and then the late pick four, but it is a 10-race card on Friday. And the uh, Makers Mark or Makers 46 Mile Grade One is the ninth race. You got the two time horse of the year, Wise Dan, in there, Jim. I talked to Charlie Lepresti uh, yesterday, and uh, that'll be up on the, it should be up now on the Keeneland YouTube channel. And he said he thinks he's as good or better than he's ever been, but he also said it's been a really hard winter, and so he may be giving away a little fitness to some horses that have already run. So is that enough to get Wise Dan beat? Well, it could be. I I hate to bet against him, but there's no way you can bet on him. He's going to be one to five. He's two to five morning line. I think he'll be one to five simply because of the reputation and a lot of people coming to the track just saying, I'm going to have a win ticket on Wise Dan. I think Zah Approval has a shot. If you look back at the Breeders' Cup mile last year, Wise Dan beat Zah Approval by three quarters of a length. And if you're talking about Zah Approval on a morning line of five to one, I don't think you're going to get that. I think it's going to be more like seven to two on him. But if you're talking about value, I think you have to look at Zah Approval as being have, have, having had one prep race, the Frank Hill Road Mile, which he finished second to uh, uh, actually third to winning prize in Lochte, who's also in here. Um, I think Zah Approval has probably got the back class to compete with Wise Dan. Uh, he hasn't been in Keeneland. Wise Dan obviously has home court advantage. But I think from a value standpoint, you have to put him in here. The other horse, Lochte, is. Um, has gotten really good lately. You look back at his past performances, and and you couldn't make a case for him at all for grade ones up until this year. He's running a twenty five thousand optional claiming, and all of a sudden he runs the uh, uh, Gulfstream Park Turf handicap in a grade one, and then he almost won the Kilroy Mile, just getting beat by winning prize. So he's run great the last two times. So I give Lockie a chance as well. So I don't think Wise Dan is a walkover. I think. Charlie is probably honest about that. That it's been a terrible winter here in the bluegrass, and Wise Dan may just need one. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a stand against him. Hate to bet against him, but I will. Yeah. And I talked to Charlie too, about the, the weather and uh, what would he do if the, the race came up on soft turf or on a poly track. And it sounded like the only way he'd scratch him would be if it, if it switched to the poly, because that happened last fall and wise Dan lost that day. And that was an unusual circumstance because just he had the skies opened up and, and, the poly track drains spectacularly, but um, it just couldn't handle all the water in that short amount of time that day. So that was a little bit of an unusual circumstance. But uh, I don't. My guess is he'll he'll probably go in this race. But I I think he is vulnerable because of um, you know how the winter's been here and you know Zah approvals uh, is the one that I I like. If I've got to uh, pick somebody to beat him, I'm going Zah approval because I think that that Kilbro yeah it was a great one, but I think it was uh, was a prep for this. So I think he's going to be you know, pointed for this race to be at his best and to try to uh, take down Wise Dan. Lochte certainly got to consider. So I would uh, za approval uh, for a win bet. And then if you wanted to exact a za approval in Wise Dan, za approval in Lochte, the latter one would certainly uh, pay big if Wise Dan didn't finish in the top two. But that's hard to imagine. So I'm going to take za approval just because it makes the – the, it doesn't make sense to to bet on the two to five. So, um, and, I, and I think he's got a shot, like you said. I think you know you look at that Breeders' Cup race, and it's not like he's got a you know four or five links that he has to make up. Let's take a look. at The late pick four starts in race seven on the Friday card. You got a horse that actually has already won at the meet, Maserati, on opening day. That's wheeling right back for Kenny McPeak. That I, I think is a, is a must use in here. And then I also used uh, Sailors Creek. Uh, green grass of Wyoming and upkeep. Then in the eighth race, Granny Max Kitten I like a lot, so definitely use that one. But also Street Home Alabama for another McPeak and um, Pretty Fancy for Rusty Arnold. And then in the uh, Makers, I'll use Zah Approval and Wise Dan. And then in the last race, uh, Tiz Tebow Time, the two, the three, Skestos, and the 12 next in line. How's your late pick four ticket look? Well, mine is similar to yours. It's a little more, a little more expensive. Um, I use exactly the same horses you use first leg, two, three, five, eight. Uh, I, I like all those horses. Maserati coming back in a week and may, may become the first horse to win twice at Kingdom. That's very unusual on, on a 15 day meet. Um, and Kenny doesn't do that that often. So I think, uh, Maserati's ready. So two, three, five, eight with upkeep, green grass, Wyoming and Sailor's Creek for me. 
The second leg, I would use Playful Love as a long shot with uh, Ian Wiltz. Uh, B.J. Hernandez always comes up with a couple of uh, upsets at the Keeneland meet. So I would take Playful Love, Street Home Alabama, the Ford, Granny McKitton, the six, and a nine-horse handmade for Alvarado and Neil Howard. And then I would use exactly the same as use all approval and wise Dan. I would, you know, you single wise Dan, you can cut this ticket in half, but spend the extra money because if it if it gets beat, it, it will multiply many times. And then the last race, I would go five deep with the two tis, Tebow time, the seven well versed, the eight bold visionary, the nine awfully sinister, and the twelve next in line for Corey Landry. That, that horse might get overlooked here. I think so it too. Ran okay at Churchill and and um, Tom Drury brings it back after a long layoff, but I think they get overlooked, so I'm going to throw him in there. So that's mm-hmm. an $80 ticket, 4 by 4 by 2 by 5 And Drury's numbers are very good off those long layoffs. And yeah, back to the Maserati horse that uh, we both mentioned. I, I like in a short meet like this, and you've got a synthetic surface, I think a lot of times that's a trainer saying, Boy, my horse really love this. I get a, you know, I got to get got to get him on this as many times as as he can handle because it's such a short meet and the money's great. So I, I tend to usually like uh, horses in that spot that I think it's a real sign of confidence by the trainer. Yeah, I do too. I think that's a good angle in that in that race. All right, enjoy the uh, Friday Makers Forty Six Mile Card. Saturday is a huge day, headlined by the Grade One Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. We'll have two podcasts here at Keeneland Select tomorrow. Uh, the Keeneland Stakes races on one and the Stakes races from Oakland Park headlined by the Arkansas Derby in the other. Remember to keep your Keeneland Select accounts fully funded. If you can't get to the track every day, you can still play through KeenelandSelect.com. This is the In the Money Podcast.